when you apply binder it's best to use a cheap wide bristle brush because it doesn't matter how well you wash your good brushes out any mediums will leave a residue on your brush binder medium as a sealer comes into its own when you want to paint on a surface other than canvas this here is corrugated cardboard it's important to seal both sides if you're going to use boards or cardboard because that stops the leaching of um, any bad stuff in the paper and the wood with which the substrate's been uh, made leaching into your paint and here where you can see the cardboard showing through is an ideal way to paint other than on canvas the molding medium and the stamps and the paint have all adhered really beautifully to the binder medium pouring medium however is thicker and is perfect to seal anything like this is an air dried air dried pot uh, made from clay and made by a young person. It's been sealed after drying with the pouring medium, then it's been stenciled with uh, Talia Free Flow, and then it's been resealed once again with the pouring medium with the benefit of making this little clay vase waterproof. This here is a uh, board. You can buy boards for painting. And if you want the appearance of the board to show through, the whole surface was uh, painted with the binder. Then because binder medium dries shiny, this is then being painted over with a clear gesso. Then this is all color pencil and paint so that you can do a beautiful work and still retain the appearance of the substrate. There are canvases available that are linen and the canvases are not treated with gesso. So if you want to retain that beautiful look of the ecru linen, what I like to do with my binder medium, firstly I've put in the composition with a Conti crayon, push that in with water so that the canvas can uh, receive the Conti. But after that, the final treatment, I wanted the acrylic to stay slick and on the surface and not be absorbed by the canvas. So everywhere where the composition was going to be centered I've painted binder medium and when that's dry I've been able to put the final layer of the acrylic on and it's and using the acrylic very thin it stayed on top of the surface and I was able to get beautiful um, softly nuanced colors into the figure. Pouring medium because of its thickness is a wonderful way to seal your color graphs. This is a used collar graph and a collar graph is just collaged textured items on a flat base for printing. So this one's been sealed. I also seal my corrugated cardboard stamps. This is the stamp that was on that first painting that we saw in this video. So you're pouring medium because it's thicker. You need to apply it with a stiff brush not any of your good brushes and the beauty of the pouring medium is it is it actually seals things like felt like these felt dot dots and these beautiful strings will retain the characteristic of the string but with a sealed layer of the pouring medium so that when it is printed all those lovely individual lines will be heightened I also use pouring medium for my handmade stamps as a seal. All of these stamps, you can see the shine where this has been sealed with the pouring medium and how the pouring medium enables the stiffening of the individual elements of that stamp. And with this one here, the pouring medium has been textured. So I'm just going to show you how I've done that. So if you're making a stamp on a flat surface, paint the pouring medium to completely seal that and then while the pouring medium is wet you just make a beautiful textured pattern and I'll just do a, a really quick demo of what they look like. So we're just going to mix up some Payne's Grey and because we're going to be using a sponge roller for this little print we're just going to add some middle medium to the paint. Roll it out, put it on the stamp And that's the beautiful texture that you achieve through the pouring medium. You can't do this with your binder medium because the binder medium is thinner than the, than the pouring medium.